Yaliman Yaliman everyone. My name is Jamil Habib. I serve on the Aga Khan Economic Planning Board for USA, and I will be your moderator today. I would like to welcome you all to the webinar. Before I introduce our panelists, I would like to invite Faraz Jesani, Chairman Aga Khan Economic Planning Board for Southwest, to say a few words on behalf of the Jamaati institutions. Chairman Faraz. Yali Madat, everyone. My name is Farhaz Jasani, and I serve as the chairman for the Economic Planning Board of the Southwestern United States. It's now been over two months since our businesses and lives first started getting disrupted by COVID-19. Our businesses have been challenged at all levels, with food services and mall-based businesses and the hospitality sector experiencing the biggest impact. Our institutions have been very active in the last few weeks by providing direct guidance and assistance to Jamaati members who reach out and by providing our Jamaat with information that is timely, accurate, and relevant. There is a lot of news out there, good and bad. So it is even more important for us to work together to cut through the noise and focus on understanding the rules and best practices and knowing how they apply to us. With this in mind, EPB has organized today's webinar. Thankfully, our government has announced a big stimulus package, the Paycheck Protection Program, or PPP, to help small businesses manage their employee headcount and some other expenses. A lot of businesses in our Jamaat have applied and many have already gotten funded. So before we start using these funds, it is very important for us to know the rules on how we are supposed to use this money and how should we document our expenses so that we are able to apply for loan forgiveness. This to say, as we get these government funds and start using them, we need to be absolutely sure that we maintain the highest ethical standards. Our Imam has repeatedly reminded us to be ethical and embrace best practices. And it is particularly important that we follow all rules as we conduct our daily business when it comes to applying for government loans and using the funds in a way that the government has intended for them to be used. We need to always be ethical and also ensure complete safety and security of our customers, our employees, and our businesses at all times. As we push through this crisis, we may experience some stress and uncertainty, but we should also have hope because we are not in this alone. We are one Jamaat, and we are all in this together. Our Jamaati institutions and our volunteers are here to guide you and assist you at all times. EPB has created an economic resource guide with constantly updated information on programs and benefits available to the Jamaat at the national, state, and local levels. This guide is available on the AICC website at ismailichamber.org. And we also have our expert volunteers, including accountants, organized and ready to help you as part of EPB's economic response team. So if you have questions or need help at any time, all you have to do is call us on the Access Helpline. The number will be shared with you on today's slides. Before I leave, I would like to thank our panelists for being here today and for selflessly sharing their knowledge and practical ideas with the Jamaat. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Faraz. Let's go through some housekeeping items before we move on. I'd like to remind everyone that this call is being recorded and a link to the recording will be available for your use within 24 to 48 hours after this call. This recording and additional EPB resources like the Comprehensive Resource Guide and all previous COVID-19 webinars will be available on the Smiley Chamber website at ismileychamber.org. 
The format of today's webinar will be moderated conversation with our panelists. Our conversation will last approximately 75 minutes, and we encourage all listeners to submit your questions via the, uh, via the question toolbox. Uh, I would request you not to use the chat box, uh, but to please use the Q&A box. We will, send the we will spend the first few minutes understanding the context of the PPP loan program. What was approved by the government, what has happened in the past few weeks, and where things stand right now. After this, we will quickly move into a presentation where we will talk through the PPP rules, we'll discuss the spirit of the law as announced by the government. And then we'll talk about the technical details, a list of do's and don'ts as people start using the PPP money to pay their bills and expenses. The goal here is to make sure that we, are, that we fully understand the rules on how we are allowed to or not allowed to spend money we have received. This is an issue about ethics and also about making sure we don't accidentally break any of these rules. And keeping proper documentation about how we spend the money also maximizes our chances to get these loans forgiven with proper use. Finally, time permitting, we will talk about specific examples based on questions we have received so that everyone understands the issues and how best practices apply to their specific industries and circumstances. With that out of the way, let me introduce our panelists. Kabir Laiwala is the CEO of Platinum Federal Credit Union and has been with them since 2001, which is one year after uh, its inception. Over the years, he has served on the board and various committees for the Georgia Credit Union League. Amir Morani is a CPA in Dallas, Texas, where he has been practicing for over 25 years. Welcome both of you, thank you for being here. Kabir, let me start off by asking you to please update us as to what has happened so far with the Paycheck Protection Program, also known as PPP, and are the funds still available? Thank you, Jamil. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so the first round of funding, as most of uh, you might be aware, uh, started uh, on Friday, April the 3rd at 8 a.m. It was $249 billion that was allocated uh, to uh, the initial SBA PPP funds. And on Thursday, April 16th, while we were putting in our apps, uh, uh, as usual, SBA uh, locked us out. And when we tried to log in again, the option for SBA PPP was gone. So on 16th April, around 10 a.m., uh, 349 billion was exhausted. Most of the banks were both processing the loans at that time and getting SBA approval. So it was a little slower process initially in the first round. Uh, at Congress and uh, Senate and White House going back and forth, gave banks to process existing applications that had come in plus the new applications that were coming in and they were ready beforehand with all the loans processed to start getting SBA approvals when it started again on Monday, April 27th at 10.30 a.m. Uh, the second round of funding was $310 billion. Uh, this morning, SBA and Treasury gave a joint statement uh, that as of May 1st, that is the Friday, uh, two days back, uh, three, uh, $175 billion is already loaned out. So we are looking at 135 billion more to go and 2.2 million loans were given in the second round. Uh, the average loan amount was much smaller in the second round compared to first one. Most of the big ones got first there and got processed. And uh, so if you are still not applied for a SBA PPP loan and you feel you are uh, eligible for it, or if you're not sure, reach out to EPB help desk, reach out to the three credit unions, uh, Platinum, Nizari, and Pioneer, if you have questions, and make sure you get in your app as soon as possible because we may be two, maybe three days away from the 300, 100, 310 billion getting exhausted. Uh, so go tomorrow morning to your bank or credit union or uh, any online financial institution and try to apply as soon as possible. Thank you, Kabir. So, Kabir, what should people expect next who have already filed? So, if you have already filed uh, for SBA PPP, you must have heard if it's already approved from SBA, 
Uh, you must have heard from your banks that uh, your loan has been approved by SBA and some banks may, some banks may not share the SBA loan number. Once the SBA assigns a loan number to your application, that means SBA has already secured those funds for you and the bank has uh, 10, bank or credit unions have 10 days from the day of the number has been issued to uh, close the loan and provide you with the funds. Okay, so, so if I have filed, but I have still not received a confirmation, what should I be doing? Uh, I would, uh, so there, as, as we talked about the second round, 2.2 million applications, first round also millions of applications. So banks may not be that proactive to send out information. Uh, so if you have not heard from your bank yet, please reach out to them. If you think you've applied on April 1st and it's already secured or whatnot, don't, don't assume stuff. Reach out to them, email them, call them, get a confirmation that yes, SBA has approved it. Not that they have just sent it to SBA. There are still loans that have been sent by Chase Bank of America, the big banks that are still in process because they send it in bulk via XML files. Smaller institutions, community banks, credit unions, have you know manually inputted information and getting approval, so they exactly know how much are approved or what are not approved or whatnot. So if you have not heard yet, please reach out multiple times if needed to your bank's credit union and get an answer. Okay, so if I have applied and I have not yet answer to my bank, so it is good that I have applied to my bank financial institution where I have applied to my call them. Correct. Yes. Uh, hesitate mat karo. Please call karo. Jab tak aapko answer nahi aaye, email se ya phone se ki SBA ne approve kar diya hai aur loan number assign ho gaya hai. Please call karte ro. Okay, great. Kabir, so people have applied from different institutions, obviously, right? Some from the credit unions, from some from their banks. Are the loan documents and the terms the same, regardless of which lender you have gone to? And can you briefly talk about what these terms are and conditions are from the SBA? Definitely. So as uh, we know, everybody has filled out the SBA form 7A, uh, sorry, SBA form 2483. Uh, all borrowers have filled the same forms, but the closing documents, although SBA came out with a modified 7A version of the form that the banks or corrections can use to close the loans, they also gave uh, leeway to banks or credit unions to use their own closing documents. They've been open about it. And uh, several banks or credit unions have used their own modified version for these closing. But like you mentioned, uh, the terms for the application as well as on the closing are, uh, like in, you can see on the screen, are pretty common among all the financial institutions. Because this is what has been put out by SBA. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll go through them. Uh, these are very important uh, six terms that you're agreeing when you apply for it and also when you take the loan when you do the closing. So first one states that, uh, which is the most important, that current economic uncertainty makes this loan request necessary to support the ongoing operation. So the business who's applying uh, for this loan, the current economic conditions are making it hard for the business to survive and that's why they are applying for this or uh, it may become uncertain and they are applying in good faith to prepare for it beforehand so that's what the first point covers second is funds will be used to retain workers and maintain payroll or rent mortgage interest or utility payments so these are the authorized use of funds you're going to retain workers, the number of workers you put on your farm, I have seven employees or 10 employees or three employees. You're going to maintain the payroll amount uh, that you disclosed in the forms uh, for 10 weeks, uh, two and a half monthly payroll, and you're going to pay off in eight weeks. And or uh, for rent or mortgage interest for the business, not your home mortgage, the business who's the borrower, if they have a mortgage for the properties, the mortgage interest for that, and utility payments for the business. And they have put a disclosure everywhere that applicant understands that if the funds are used for unauthorized purposes, the federal government may pursue criminal fraud charges. So it's very important to ensure that we're using it for intended purposes or authorized purposes. 
documents for eight weeks after loan disbursement will be provided to request forgiveness of loan. So it's not an automatic forgiveness. Borrower has to submit proper documents for the eight weeks where the funds have been used and request for the forgiveness to the bank where they applied and where they got the loan from. Payroll cost should be minimum 75% and 25% can be used towards rent or mortgage interest or utilities. All information and documentation submitted for this loan application is true and correct. Penalty of imprisonment and or fines under three different sections may apply if you have uh, miscommunicated uh, mis or misinformed the bank to obtain the loan. Uh, the last uh, option, uh, the last thing that you agree to is uh, loan amount is calculated based on the tax documents submitted by the applicant and they are identical to those submitted to IRS. Applicants agree for lender to share tax information with SBA for file, filing and review. So SBA can choose to review or double check with IRS, okay, the 940 when you submit it for the loan purpose is the same 941 that you submitted to IRS for payroll. Wow, thank you, Kabir, for the clarification. That is a lot to unfold. Let's see if we can get more details on that. Amir, for the next several minutes, I would like to discuss two main topics with you. The PPP rule as it now stands, and then the forgiveness part. Can you first please remind us the details of the PPP rule? and perhaps talk about the actual spirit of the law as to why this law was passed by Congress in the first place. Thank you, Jamil. Um, as we know, any law that is passed and put into effect has a spirit or a purpose behind it. Um, we all must understand that the primary spirit of this law is paycheck protection. Now, when it says, uh, paycheck protection, it is not paycheck protection only for the owners of the company. It is particularly for the employees of the company. The Congress wants the employers to maintain employment of their employees. Congress wants to make sure that you don't lay off the employees and keep them on payroll. And so as we discuss this subject, we must understand that we all are getting this loan to retain employment of our employees. And that is the primary purpose of this law. So as we will look into the next slide, as we go deeper into this loan details, we must understand as Kabir just mentioned that we have certified that we, you know, we have certain uh, situation in the business because of the economic environment we are in. And so this is a necessary loan request. Now, we, we all are in an uncertain economic environment. So uh, we don't know for certainty that I will have a problem in business. It is an uncertainty, but the uncertainty makes this loan request necessary. So it should be some kind of a situation that we are all in and a lot of businesses had to close down had to be um, had to be in lockdown so there is a situation that we are all aware of so uh, if you are a small business and if you don't have easy access to funds um, then you are okay and one additional big certification is that the funds will only be used for payroll rent mortgage interest, not regular interest. You know, if you have credit cards and other loans, that's not what's covered. It's only mortgage interest that is specifically mentioned. Lease payments and utility payments. Those are the expenses that you are um, allowed to cover. And this is an important area that we will be covering in a minute of knowingly use of funds for unauthorized purposes. And I will elaborate on that in a minute as we talk about it. So first thing is you got to ensure that you are certifying in good faith. Now this is a clarification 
that came out um, recently after so many people had already applied for the PPP loan that the IRS and said that, you know, if your business has access to liquidity uh, in other form, other sources, uh, that would, you know, if you use that liquidity and it doesn't uh, affect your business negatively, meaning, you know, the use of funds would not create a survival issue for your business, then you should be careful in getting this loan. So there's a certification in good faith and a lot of banks are circulating this out to their borrowers. So I want to stress that this is an important certification. If you feel that you may have some doubt about it, do get it reviewed, do get it uh, checked out with your consultant, your advisor. If you need some help with it, call access. We may be able to help you with some consultant who can help you think through it. And if you feel that you may have some risk, then you have a deadline, a safe harbor date that IRS has announced, and that is May 7th. If you return the funds by May 7th, then it would be considered as if you never borrowed it. Now, I want to stress that it has also come out uh, very clearly from the, uh, the major organizations that are supporting this loan from, from different perspective, that small businesses don't need to get scared about it, that am I committing some kind of fraud? Be careful, watch carefully that you are actually eligible for it because your business is in an uncertain environment and you need support and you don't have access to liquidity easily, um, that the safe harbor date is a important date, but not to be worried about, not to be scared about. So I have a lot of businesses in which you have a loan, a PPP loan, and you have heard that you know, bank bol rahi hai ki agar aapke paas mein you have money somewhere else liquidity then you shouldn't borrow it aap usko check out karwaye review karwaye dekhe ki kya aapke liye koi risk hai iske andar mein agar risk hai to may 7th ki date ko yaad rakhe kyunki hum ek government document sign karte hain aur jo kabir ne bhi mention kiya ki humne government ki loan ke document pe sign kiya hai aur agar hum koi koi kisam ka you know inadvertently by mistake galti se ya na jante hue kyunki ye rule abhi aaya aapki loan pehle ho gayi thi aur aapko ab malum pada ke bhai ye irs bol rahi hai ki aap aise hi nahi utha sakte ho ye loan if you have liquidity then don't take it aapko aisa lagta hai ki you may not be uh, eligible aapke liye sahi nahi hai to aap may 7th tak is is loan amount ko return kar denge to it is as if ki aapne ye loan ke liye apply kiya hi nahi tha to you know that's a good way to look at it, to make sure that there is no risk and if there is no risk, then make sure to make sure. And another important thing I want to stress here, that sometimes we think that this is a very good loan, you know, 1%, pe, who will give me 1% loan for two years? Le lete hai, you know, I can use it for anything. The forgiveness ka time will come, the bank will say that we forgiveness not need forgiveness. No, we have to remember, Look at what it says and what Kabir stressed earlier. I understand that if the funds are knowingly used for unauthorized purposes, the federal government may hold me legally liable. Now, this means that you got the money. Let's say you got $50,000 for payroll and utility and rent. And you said, yeah, I don't need this money. I've laid off everybody. I don't, I don't think I'm going to be opening the business. Uh, okay, you know, when the bank comes, I'm going to tell them, I'm sorry, I didn't use it for payroll. You can convert it to loan. No, these funds were used for other purposes. And you've got to be careful. You have to be careful about it. These funds must be used for authorized purposes. And if you don't have authorized purposes, don't be reckless with these funds. Don't start using it at other places. This is not the money to be used at anywhere else, only for this purpose. Agar aapke paas mein uska adequate use nahi hai, to at that time the bank will tell you, ke, okay, you are left with $10,000. You might get an option. We don't know how the rules will come about later on because the clarification, 
clarifications will come. They might give you an option that, okay, you didn't use the $10,000 for the, uh, in a, the right purpose. You want to return it, you can return it, or it will be converted to loan. But at least the funds should be there and don't use it for unauthorized purposes. That's a very careful, important information that I would like to stress over here. As wow. we move on to the next thing, uh, I want to, uh, uh, you know, Jamil, I guess, you know, we would like to, uh, again, stress it here is that um, plan to qualify for forgiveness. And I'm stressing again, don't plan for loan plan for forgiveness and don't lay off employees now if you are getting PPP. An important date, April 26th. The rule said, this is another clarification that came in. And again, I want to stress, clarification there will be more clarifications coming. But IRS April 26th if you have reduced your headcount number of employees by until April 26th, you have a chance to make it up by June 30th. This means that if you have April 26th, you have to make it up by June 30th. This means that if you have reduced people after April 26th, you have to make it up by So if you reduced people after April 26th, they are not giving you a makeup time for June 30th. So if you're planning, you know, let me lay off people in May and then I'll bring them back in June. Please don't try that. That's not an option that you have been given. If you got the funds of PPP, you have to keep the employees on payroll. That is the spirit of the law and that is what needs to be done. So I suggest that follow some important processes if you can. Keep the PPP funds separate if possible. Agar ho sake, keep it in a separate account and use the money in that account for the purposes that has been authorized. Use it for payroll, use it, with, use it for the authorized expenses and keep very good record, excellent records with documentation for all of that, that expenses, all of the expenses that you incur from there. And finally, stay connected with your bank, stay informed, Ke kab aap kya certification ka requirement hai, kya forms required hai, kya documentation required hai, so you don't miss out on any of those things. Thank you, Amir. That's a, that's a lot of good information. So uh, from what I am hearing, uh, I just wanted to reiterate this. If I got a PPP loan, and even if I know that I'm not going to be applying for forgiveness, I still need to make absolutely sure that I am only using the funds for the approved expenses and not for anything else, correct? Yeah, don't think that I'm gonna just convert it to loan so it doesn't matter. Correct, because they may still come back and say, okay, we gave you this loan, but what did you use it for? Yes. Okay, wonderful. I think we should, we should, we should also uh, remind everyone that, look, ever since this law was passed, uh, we have been getting uh, subsequent clarifications on the law from the SBA and the IRS. And it is possible that we may continue getting more clarification on this law. So while some things may not be clear today, uh, in the next few days, we may get more clarification on that. Correct, um, Amir? That's correct, yeah. Okay, great. All right, so now that we have clarification, Amir, that what this forgiveness looks like, could you please walk us through the details of how to calculate and apply for loan forgiveness? How will this work? Sure. Um, so there are a few uh, important uh, things that they have mentioned in the rules right now. And as you said, we have to keep watching. More clarifications will come. But according to the, uh, the notification that was issued on April 26th by IRS, they said, that the eight week period, and these are the words in their clarification, it says the eight week period begins on the date the lender makes the first disbursement of the PPP loan to the borrower. So the IRS is saying that the day you get the money in your account from the lender, that's when the eight week period starts. Now there, you know, these clarifications will become more clearer as we go, 
because if you go into your loan document, the loan date may be different and the day you get the money in your account may be different. This is the notification clarification as of today. It may change. What can the funds be used for? The first criteria they said, use it no less than 75% for payroll. It's not no more than, it's no less than 75% for payroll. And then no more than 25% for non-payroll expenses. So this 75-25 split is very hard on the border in terms that payroll can't go below 75. Other non-payroll non expenses can not go above 25. They can go into other territory in the positive way, but not in a negative way. Then, uh, Again, I want to stress that, you know, you got the money and you said this money can be used for rent. Let me lease a new space today for my business and uh, get, pay the rent. It very clearly states that the rent, the rent agreement should be already in place in effect on February 15, 2020. So don't go out and lease a new space and say, okay, I've got money so I can use it for rent. Don't enter into new utility contracts uh, after uh, February 15 to use this money. And also the mortgage debt, the interest on mortgage debt should also be on borrowing that was completed before February 15th. Amir, up 75-25 could you split a ek dafa please wapis uh, uh, repeat karenge please ha uh, main you know i'm going to uh, iska jo ek bahut important part hai ke aapko let's say you got a uh, $100,000 in ppp money aapko out of that 100,000 $75,000 aapko payroll ke liye use karna hai now up 80,000 kar sakte ho, up 90,000 kar sakte ho, up pura 100,000 payroll pe dal sakte ho. Again, up 70,000 nahi kar sakte ho. Don't go below 75%. 75% ke niche nahi jal sakte. Up rent ke liye use kar sakte ho, lekin koi aisi lease nahi ke jo aaj sign ho rahi hai. Koi nahi lease ke liye nahi. Koi naya utilities ka agreement nahi. Koi nahi electric supply or uh, water supply start nahi karni hai. Or koi nahi mortgage interest aaj shuru ho rahi hai, march mein shuru ho rahi hai, us time. All of this is necessary or aap $30,000 non-payroll pe use nahi kar sakte. Aur uski, uska impact kya hoga, mein aage explain karunga, ke aapka, let's say if you, if you use less than 75% for payroll, then your forgiven amount will be proportionately lower. And then there is more formula that is that comes into play after. So next thing uh, I want to stress is that second, you know, a little, little bit definition on the payroll. I, I, I want to stress it here. Okay, payroll ke andar mein aap salaries, wages, commissions, tips, employee benefits, jiske andar vacation, parental uh, leave hai, family leave hai, um, severance pay hai, kisi ko aapne nikala, usko severance package de rahe hai aap. Healthcare insurance pay kar rahe hain aur koi kisam ka retirement benefit hai. Ab retirement benefit ke andar mein clarification ye hai ke agar aap company ke andar mein aap company ki taraf se retirement benefit mein contribute karte hain to that also counts as payroll uh, expense. Aur iske ilawa aap uh, state and local taxes mein uh, jo pay karte hain. Ab iske andar mein uh, sirf unemployment tax wagera account hota hai. and then if you are a sole proprietor or an independent contractor and if you have employees then the same rules apply but then your own uh, own uh, compensation is also an important thing yahan par main khas stress karu ke agar aap schedule c file karte hain agar aapko 1099 ke base pe ppp mila hai please consult your professional advisor, agar aapko zarurat hai, to aap access mein call kare. We have some consultants, some advisors available, and we will share some special facility available for Jamaati members to call and get advice on this topic. Ke aap check kare ke aapka forgiveness amount, jo maafi hone wali hai aapki, wo different hai as an independent contractor, aapka self-employment income pe. 
तो आपको दो तरफ से ख्याल रखना है अगर आपके एम्प्लॉज हैं तो उसके लिए आपका डिफरेंट है आपके खुद के पार्ट के लिए देर इज अ डिफरेंट रूल दैट यू नीड टू बी केयरफुल अबाउट दैट एट वीक्स का होगा यू डोंट गेट टू एंड हाफ मंथ एंड देर इज अ डिफरेंट कैलकुलेशन दैट देव गिव so then um uh, let me talk and jamil i'm sorry i'm going into my you know i think kabir's time a little bit that's fine that's fine go ahead please uh there are additional criteria uh and that is the uh number of staff uh the loan forgiveness will be reduced if you decrease your uh full time equivalent uh, employee headcount um to aapko khayal rakhna hai ke आपके जो फुल टाइम इक्विवेलेंट इम्प्लॉज थे और ये मैं अभी थोड़ी देर में क्लैरिफाई करूंगा कि आप सब जगह पढ़ेंगे कि एफ टी ई ई वो लोग कहते हैं तो अगर आपके पास में एक इम्प्लॉई जो आपके पास पंद्रह घंटे काम करता है हफ्ते में दैट्स नॉट कंसिडर्ड ए फुल टाइम इक्वेलेंट इम्प्लॉय ए फुल टाइम इक्वेलेंट इम्प्लॉय इज थर्टी आवर्स एंड दैट थर्टी आवर एक्सप्लेनेशन इज बेस्ड ऑन प्रीवियस गवर्नमेंट रूल्स इस वक्त करेंटली यूएस ट्रेजरी ने कोई किस्म का एफ टी ई के अंदर में चेंजेस नहीं किए कि नहीं हमारे हिसाब से एफ टी ई का मतलब यह है तो इस वक्त अक्रॉस द बोर्ड एवरीबडी इज कंसिडरिंग ए प्रीवियस एक्सप्लेनेशन जो पहले अफोर्डेबल केयर एक्ट के अंदर यूज हुआ है कि फुल टाइम इक्वेलेंट इम्प्लॉय का मतलब वो इम्प्लॉय जो आपके पास कम अज कम तीस घंटे हफ्ते में काम करता है तो अगर आपके पास दो इम्प्लॉय पंद्रह पंद्रह घंटे काम करते हैं तो इसका मतलब आपके पास एक फुल टाइम इक्वेलेंट इम्प्लॉय है दो नहीं अब ये डिफरेंस मैं आपको खास तौर पे बताना चाहता हूँ कि हमने जब एप्लीकेशन भरी थी लोन के लिए तो उस वक्त हमने एक नंबर डाला था कि हमारे पास इतने इम्प्लॉय है दैट्स नॉट द नंबर वी आर वर्किंग विद for loan forgiveness and this is very clearly stated in the us treasury's clarification wo number different tha jab forgiveness ka part aayega tab ek different number use hoga aur main uske uski clarification thodi der mein deta hu aapko ye khayal rakhna hai ki agar aapne april 26 tak logon ko lay off kiya hai to you can uh, you can rehire them aap usko wapas lekar aa sakte hain और आपको उसकी माफी मिल जाएगी तो सपोज के आपने अब अब मैं एक एग्जांपल इन मिनट देता हूं कि आई थिंक नेक्स्ट स्क्रीन पे मेरे पास में एक एक्सप्लेनेशन है कि अगर आपके पास में uh, और ये बिफोर आई गो टू माय एक्सप्लेनेशन अगेन आई एम स्ट्रेसिंग हियर कि दिस इज नॉट एज आई सेड दिस इज नॉट द नंबर ऑफ एम्प्लॉज यू रोट इन योर एप्लीकेशन आपने एप्लीकेशन में जो लिखा था वो नहीं है अब आप देखें डेट्स देख लें कि इस रू इस लॉ के अंदर में इन्होंने दो डेट्स पकड़ी हैं फेब्रुवरी 15 2019 से लेके जून 30 2019 या जनवरी 1 2020 से लेके फेब्रुवरी 29 2020 ये इन्होंने बेसलाइन डेट्स दी हैं कि आप इन दो डेट्स में से देखो पहले कि आपके पास में कितने फुल टाइम इक्वेलेंट एम्प्लॉय थे उस टाइम पे और जो भी आपके फेवर में है ये अलाउ किया उन्होंने कि जो आपके फेवर में है सपोज कि आपके पास में जून थर्टी ट्वेंटी नाइनटीन के टाइम फ्रेम के अंदर में आपके पास में दस फुल टाइम इक्वेलेंट थे और जनवरी फर्स्ट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी से फेबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी नाइन तक आपके पास में पांच फुल टाइम इक्वेलेंट एम्प्लॉज थे तो यू कैन पिक द न्यू पीरियड विच इज द फाइव एम्प्लॉज तो इस एग्जाम्पल के अंदर आप देख रहे हैं कि आपके पास में सपोज के बेसलाइन पीरियड और बेसलाइन जब मैं कहता हूं तो बेसलाइन इज द ओल्ड पीरियड या तो 2019 का या 2020 का आपके पास 10 एम्प्लॉज थे आपके पास में अप्रैल 26 2020 को सात एम्प्लॉज हैं अगर जून 30 के दिन आपके पास नौ एम्प्लॉज हैं तो आपका 90 परसेंट ऑफ द लोन फॉरगिव होगा ये अकॉर्डिंग टू टूडेज एक्सप्लेनेशन है कि इस वक्त इन्होंने कहा कि सपोज के आपने आउट ऑफ दैट हंड्रेड थाउजेंड सेवन हंड्रेड सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट विच इज सेवेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड डॉलर आपने पेरोल पे यूज किया और ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट आपने रेंट यूटिलिटीज और मॉडगेज पे यूज किया अब आप क्वालिफाई हो गए आप यू डेड एवरी थिंग गुड आपने सेवेंटी फाइव परसेंट पेरोल पे किया ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट रेंट पे किया यूटिलिटीज पे किया 
अब आपका दूसरा टेस्ट है दूसरे टेस्ट के अंदर में यू फेल्ड बाई टेन परसेंट नाउ ओनली नाइनटी परसेंट ऑफ दैट लोन अमाउंट विल बी फॉर गिविंग सो इवन दो यू क्वालिफाइड इन द फर्स्ट टेस्ट द सेकेंड टेस्ट स्टॉप्स यू बाय टेन परसेंट दैट्स दी एक्सप्लेनेशन दैट हैज बीन गिवन सो फार सो डोंट रिड्यूस पे रोल एंड द थर्ड टेस्ट द थर्ड टेस्ट हैज डोंट रिड्यूस द पे रोल बाय मोर देन ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट फॉर एनी एम्प्लॉई आपके जो करंट एम्प्लॉयज हैं उनके पे रोल को ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट से ज्यादा कम ना करें अगर कम किया है अगेन यू हैव अ चांस टू मेक अप दैट बाई जून थर्टी तो आप दो चीज आपको माफी मिल सकती है अगर आपने पे चेक कम कर दिया था फिक्स इट बाई जून थर्टी अगर आपने ले ऑफ कर दिया रिहायर दम बाई जून थर्टी ओनली इफ यू लेड ऑफ पीपल बाई अप्रिल ट्वेंटी आई आर एस एंड एस बी ए विल गिव मोर क्लैरिफिकेशन एज आई सेड के जब लोन हो रही थी तो एज कबीर वुड वाउच फॉर इट एवरी वीक वी वर गेटिंग न्यू क्लैरिफिकेशन न्यू थिंग्स वर कमिंग अप Okay, uh, ab ye rule aa gaya, ab ye rule aa gaya. We don't know what more clarifications will come. So keep watching, keep reading it, and stay in touch with your bank to see how how the rules are evolving. But ek cheez khayal rakhe, kuch bhi rule change ho, kuch bhi ho. Apne jo sign kar diya hai, jo apne paper pe sign kiya hai, uska bhot khayal rakhe ki apne bola hai ki you will not use it for unauthorized purposes. So that rule remains. and so make sure that you try to keep the fund separate keep strong records and implement very strong financial controls in your organization to watch that money carefully wow thank you amir amir there is a quick question that has come and let me see if i can ask you this uh, let us know if there is a clarification on this from the sba and irs already theek hai क्वेश्चन इज दैट इफ आई हैव रिसीव पी 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 ऑन मे फर्स्ट ठीक है मेरी लोन मे फर्स्ट वाई बट माई स्टोर इन द मॉल विल बी क्लोज अंटिल जून वन बिकॉज ऑफ द स्टेट रिस्ट्रिक्शन सो डज माई एट वीक पीरियड स्टार्ट वेन आई गॉट द लोन ऑन मे फर्स्ट और विल इट स्टार्ट वेन आई एम एबल टू गेट गो बैक टू माई बिजनेस अनफॉर्चुनेटलीट्स चैलेंजिंग सिचुएशन विच अ लॉर्ड ऑफ एम्प्लॉयर्स आर इन as i said in the beginning the spirit of the law is not to give you a chance to run your business and pay payroll from government money the spirit of the law is keep employees in their job it doesn't say do it only when you have work so in a way it's a very difficult situation many businesses are in and that's why i'm going to talk about a very important other opportunity that many business owners could consider and i don't know if yes. they have got ppp money and they can return it by may 7th and think about the the other opportunity we'll talk about it but yeah. today the explanation the question you asked yes even though your business is closed the government wants you to keep them on payroll and pay them that's what the explanation today is they don't want you to wait till the business opens up so that you can use the money to pay payroll and run the business for yourself thank you uh thank you amir so let's shift gears just a little bit um kabir for those who have who may not have applied for ppp or are not able to apply for ppp funds for whatever reason are there any other sba options for them also for those who have existing sba loans is there any relief so i'll just just uh, give some information on the previous question uh, when may 1st and june 1st we were talking about the dates when the loan is so yes uh, uh, chairman morani pointed out the loan if you have taken on may 1st that's when the payback uh, the payroll and all that starts from that day the the point that uh, treasury secretary is pushing or promoting a lot is that the sba ppp program is reducing the stress on unemployment so that is one of the main purposes of the sba ppp as well that it needs to take away some burden from unemployment and keep unemployment numbers low so keep that in mind uh so the to your question about the sba so there were total four uh relief options or assistance that sba came up with 
one which we have been discussing in detail, which is the SBA PPP. Let me give you some information on the other three uh, assistance that SBA has rolled out. So one of them, which was pretty much the first one was SBA EIDL, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. So that was initially the 25,000 number was floating. The loan can be up to $2 million, but you can take up to $25,000 without any guarantees. Once you go above 25,000, then start asking for collateral. And once you go, I think it's about 350,000, then they start, or 250,000, they start asking for guarantees, personal guarantees. So, but up to 25,000, there was no guarantees. And the key number that everybody went for was the $10,000. You had to check mark, yes, I won the grant, $10,000. And that's how it started. But as the program went in and a lot of people applied, they reduced that blanket 10,000 and came up with a new ruling. Like Chairman Morani mentioned, they keep updating these things. Uh, it was 1,000 per employee. So if you have only one employee, you cannot get 10,000 grant. You'll get only $1,000. Uh, so uh, even for SBA PPP, the rule doesn't say final rule. It says interim final rule. That means they can keep updating it. And as Chairman Morani said, we initially were started getting weekly. Sometimes, you know, every other day there will be some updates to that interim rule. So as they are getting questions from the banks or financial institution or maybe from individuals calling to SBA uh, for questions, updating these rules and uh, uh, Chairman Morani said, make sure you uh, keep uh, your banker, uh, you know, uh, in check and in touch with them. I would say the other thing, keep your accountant close to you and keep checking with them as well, because forgiveness part, your accountant will play a key role for the payroll details and all that you have to submit. So yeah, first one was SBA EIDL, but unfortunately, as of May 1st, they have stopped accepting any new application for the EIDL. So if you go on SBA website, uh, they'll let, uh, this was supposed to be applied through SBA. It says they don't have any more appropriations and they have stopped taking new applications. But in the new funding, they added some funds for the EIDL and they are processing the loans or the applications that were received before. So the funding was out, they were still, still receiving and processing applications. So they're gonna to continue to process those. Once those are done and if there is room, they may open it up again. Uh, so keep checking the SBA website uh, if you have not availed the uh, EIDL uh, option. The third one, so PPP was first, EIDL second. The third one is the SBA Express Bridge Loan. So you can, again, this one is up to $25,000. Only the banks or credit unions that are SBA Express lenders. Unfortunately, none of the three community credit unions are SBA Express lenders. Uh, we are all three SBA 7A lenders, but not express. You have to meet certain criteria each year and a certain number of 7A or 504 loans to be an SBA express lender. So SBA express lenders was author were authorized to give loans, and uh, which was supposed to be repaid in full or in part by the proceeds from the EIDL. So while the, if you have applied for EIDL, while that is still in process, you can immediately express lenders process it pretty fast. And you can get the 25,000 once your EIDL is processed, you get the 25, you can pay that off. Or SBA will pay that off on your behalf to the bank and now you owe the uh, SBA for that. So that was the second option. And the last option, which is amazing, uh, SBA debt relief. So if you currently have an SBA 7A loan or SBA 504 loan from any lender, SBA will pay six months payment for you. So it'll be principal, interest, and any fee that you pay every month to the lender. SBA will pay six months for that loan on behalf of you. If you will make the payment, if it's an ACH, the bank will reach out to you to return the payment to you, but you have an option to apply the loan, the payment entirely towards principal. So SBA is making payments for principal and interest. And if you are continuing to make payment, that can go entirely towards principal. Or if you want, if you think you want to maintain liquidity, you can get that funds back and keep it with you. Uh, if you don't have a 7A loan or a 504 loan, but you intend to apply for one, or you are you were in the works to apply for one because of the downturn, maybe you didn't apply. Uh, most of the 
first time business owners who are trying to get either working capital or uh, a franchise business or even financing up a, a commercial real estate can get either 7A, 7A loans or a 504 can qualify for those. And if you take the loan between March 27th and September 27th, so by, if you close the loan by September 27th, this six months uh, assistance still, still applies to you. The day first payment starts for this new loan, SBA will make six payments, principal and interest on your behalf towards that loan. That's a huge, huge benefit uh, that if you have a 7A or 504, or if you're considering to apply, please make sure you do apply. Or if you were not thinking of this, and maybe I know SBA, a lot of people shy out because of the SBA guarantee fee, but if you calculate the six month payment and if it works out in your favor, that the 3% fee or 3.75% fee that you pay compared to the six months payment is much higher amount you may move from conventional to a SBA loan and ask the banker or the credit union where you're applying for, can I please apply for the 7A or 504 loan and not the conventional loan? So you need to work out with your accountant which option works better for you. Great, Kabir. Um, I'd like to remind our participants that this is a 75 minute webinar. So we will go uh, 15 minutes after the hour and we will try and get as much information to you and try and get to your questions. Um, although um, we EPB has also um, created a um, specific PPP um, loans um, um, uh, consultation opportunity for the Jamaat, and I will share that with you before the end of the webinar. So if your specific questions or situations have not been answered, uh, you can definitely get help from there. So Amir, coming to you, um, also for those who have not gotten PPP funding, I understand that they may be able to qualify for the employment retention, retention credit that you spoke about earlier. Can you please explain what that is and how that works? Uh, and also, while you're doing that, uh, Kabir has just mentioned about the EIDL loan. Could you also talk about how that works in conjunction with the PPP loans, please? Yeah, so uh, the first part uh, is the employee retention credit, and this is an important uh, opportunity for many business owners uh, and, and the type of question you just asked that the business is closed, you have a restaurant inside a mall and the restaurant is closed right now, uh, it won't open up maybe May 15th, maybe May 30th, and then it'll take time to build up and you may not be able to, you know, you're using the money the PPP money to pay the payroll, but when the time comes, you now are running on some tight budget. So there is another program, this is the employee retention credit, and it says that if your business has, has to close down due to government orders, which is lockdowns, or the business declines more than 50%, and there is a comparison quarter to quarter from last year to this year. If your business declines or you were closed down due to government orders, then you qualify for this. And the credit period is March 13th till December 31st. Very interesting one. You, have, you should be an employer with 100 employees or less, but you'll get up to 50% of the wages paid as a credit from the IRS. So there's a form that they have come up with. There's a 7200, form 7200. And so every quarter or, you know, you, you're gonna pay the payroll to the employees, but let's say that you had five employees and each of them made uh, say $5,000 each you could get $2,500 back from the government towards that wages. Now, this goes up to a maximum of 5,000, which means wages up to 10,000. And this covers the period from March 13 till December 31st. So again, aapke paas mein restaurant hai ya koi aisa business hai ke jo band ho gaya hai because of lockdown or ya aapka business drop okay, more than 50% compared to last year, then up 
अपने एम्प्लॉयज को जो पे रोल पे करोगे फ्रॉम मार्च थर्टीन से लेकर डिसम्बर थर्टी फर्स्ट तक अप टू दस हजार डॉलर तक का जो पे रोल है उसमें से आधा फिफ्टी परसेंट यू कैन गेट फ्रॉम दवर्नमेंट तो आपको एक एम्प्लॉई दस हजार डॉलर तक का एम्प्लॉई आपको आधे खर्चे में यू गेटिंग दैट एम्प्लॉई टू वर्क फॉर योर बिजनेस दिस इज अ रिफंडेबल क्रेडिट इसका मतलब ये कि ये ऐसा नहीं है कि आपके पेरोल के टैक्स के अगेंस्ट में कट हो जाएगा आपका जो पेरोल टैक्स बनता था जो भी एम्प्लॉयर पोर्शन है वो कटेगा सपोज कि आपका आपके अपने एम्प्लॉयज को पेरोल दिया और आपका पेरोल टैक्स दो हजार डॉलर बनता है और आपके एम्प्लॉयज का जो आपका क्रेडिट है वो पांच हजार डॉलर बनता है तो दो हजार में से जो एम्प्लॉयर का शेयर है जो एक हजार डॉलर आपका शेयर अगर है तो वो एक हजार काट के बाकी चार हजार आपको आई आर एस भेजेगी तो आपको वो हजार उसको नहीं भेजना है यू विल गेट फोर थाउजेंड बैक फ्रॉम दी आई आर एस इट्स एन इंटरेस्टिंग क्रेडिट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वन एंड इट इज अ गुड स्ट्रेटेजी फॉर दो बिजनेस लो एम्प्लॉज उनको एम्प्लॉज को ले ऑफ देना पड़ा और अब पता नहीं है कि मे की एंड में जाके शायद उनका बिजनेस स्टार्ट हो तो दे शुड लुक एट दिस क्रेडिट और अगर आपने पी 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 लोन नहीं ली है तो ही आप इसके लिए एलिजिबल है यू शुड नॉट है लोन इन ऑर्डर टू यूज दिस क्रेडिट अब यू नो इसके अंदर में आप देख सकते हो कि मे बी यू कुड यूज दी मे सेवन डेडलाइन जो मैंने थोड़ी देर पहले बात की वो यूज हो सकती हो इफ दिस लुक्स लाइक इट एंड देन आई वॉन्ट टू गो बैक फॉर अ सेकेंड ऑन अनदर थॉट देयर दैट आपके पास में uh, हमारे पास में कुछ जमाती मेंबर्स के ये क्वेश्चन थे कि भाई मैंने बिजनेस अभी स्टार्ट कर रहा था मैंने लोन ली हुई थी everything was just about to get started i was going to open my business brand new business on march 1st or march 15th and look all this happened and i i'm not qualified for ppp so very interestingly aap agar irs ki website pe jayenge to irs ne is particular situation ko bhi cover kiya hai is credit ke andar कि अगर आप एक नया बिजनेस स्टार्ट कर रहे थे आपका बिजनेस स्टार्ट नहीं हुआ था और और ये सब हो गया तो आप क्वालिफाई नहीं होते हो पीपीपी के लिए क्योंकि आपके पास कोई हिस्ट्री नहीं है तो यू डू क्वालिफाई फॉर दिस क्रेडिट इफ यू हैड ए ब्रांड न्यू बिजनेस व्हिच वाज अबाउट टू गेट स्टार्टेड आफ्टर फेबर फिफ्टीन एंड यू वेंट थ्रू दिस क्राइसिस सो यू कुड स्टार्ट योर बिजनेस और उसके कुछ क्राइटेरिया है जो आप मीट कर लोगे इजिली and you can do that next i want to cover about the eidl that you asked ji eidl jaise abhi humne suna ke this is a separate loan that was uh, that was being uh, given by sba currently it is stopped but you know uh, right now nobody can get it or nobody can apply for it but those who have applied are being considered agar aapko April third के बाद EIDL loan मिली है, which most people probably got it after April third. If you got it before April third, then there's a whole different thing that needs to be done with PPP, and I'm not going to cover that here because you know that's a small number of people and they can consult with us. अगर आपको April third तक EIDL मिल गया था, April third के बाद अगर EIDL मिला है I want to stress that don't commingle, commingle the funds. EIDL के funds को लेके PPP के funds के साथ मिला मत दीजिए, because it very clearly states in the law in the uh, rules that the money should not be used for the same purpose. अगर आपका amount loan amount mix up हो गया होगा तो then you'll have a problem. Trying to certify that I use PPP money for this and I use EIDL for that. try to keep it separate these are very you know as i would like to call it like this is hot money touch it carefully <laughs> be very careful with it you know keep them separate use it for the right purpose don't commingle it milao mat dono ko saath mein alag alag rakho aur ek aur question ye hai ke jaise abhi we heard from kabir ke a lot of you know initially when the rule came har company ko 10000 dollar milne wale the the rule said that 
देन दे सेड कि ये तो बहुत सारे लोग लाइन में खड़े हो गए 10000 के लिए तो दे प्रोबब्ली रिड्यूस्ड इट सो दे सेड के यू विल गेट 1000 डॉलर पर एम्प्लॉई एक एम्प्लॉई का 1000 डॉलर है इस तरह से अगर आपके पास 10 एम्प्लॉई है तो आपको 10000 डॉलर आएंगे 15 एम्प्लॉई है तो 10000 डॉलर आएंगे तीन एम्प्लॉई है तो 3000 डॉलर अब ये क्वेश्चन ये है कि ये 3000 डॉलर का मैं क्या करूं अगेन द रूल इज डोंट मिक्स इट कीप इट आउट कीप इट सेपरेट क्योंकि सर्टिफिकेशन के बड़े मसले हो जाएंगे बाद में आपको क्योंकि यू नो पीपीपी मनी इज टू बी फॉरगिवन एंड आई हैव पुट दिस स्पेसिफिकली फ्रॉम एसबीआईज रूल्स कि इन्होंने बोला है कि दिस लोन एडवांस विल नॉट हैव टू बी रीपेड ये इनका आज का रूल है कल का रूल है टुमारो व्हाट हैपेंस वी डोंट नो बट एज ऑफ नाउ दे आर सेइंग this money that you got the loan advance is not repaid this is a grant in a way so but don't mix up the two money in there even then keep it separate ppp ko ekdam separate rakhe eidl ko separate rakhe and then you will be safe because certification will be easy we don't know what are the details of the rules that will come but these are good good practices that will help us in order to certify that we use this money for pur- good purpose remember all of this certification ye sari certification jo hum ppp ke liye karenge is sab ke andar mein humse under oath signing hogi bank humko form bhej degi bank humko papers bhej denge bolenge isko bhar ke bhej do wo log aake shayad hamara audit to nahi karenge bank ke paas itna time nahi hai bank ke paas ya sbi ke paas mein they may not do that but there may be audits happening for different purposes at different times aapka documentation solid hona chahiye aapko certification ka confidence hona chahiye ki aapne jo certify kiya is genuine and proper wow uh great information uh for the benefit of our participants hum jante hain ki jo information humne share ki wo kafi technical hai isme kafi kafi uh different uh topics hain so hum i'm i'm hum और क्वेश्चंस भी काफी सारे हैं तो हम ट्राई करेंगे जो भी क्वेश्चन हम आंसर कर सके हमारे बकिया टाइम में हम करेंगे जैसे मैंने मेंशन किया कि मैं आपसे आल्सो शेयर करूंगा कि आप कंसल्टेशन के लिए कहाँ कॉल कर सकते हैं इसके अलावा जैसे जैसे क्लेरिफिकेशन हमें आती रहेगी हम दूसरे वेबिनार भी ऑर्गेनाइज करेंगे ताकि आपको हम लेटेस्ट इंफॉर्मेशन दे सकें और ऑफ कोर्स आपको अगर किसी भी इन चीजों में से हेल्प चाहिए आप एक्सेस को कॉल कर सकते हैं और एक्सेस के थ्रू जो हमारे जमाती वॉल्टियर्स हैं सब्जेक्ट मैटर एक्सपर्ट्स आप उनको रीच कर सकते हैं कबीर अमीर ने अपने प्रेजेंटेशन में भी ये बात मेंशन की मे सेवेंथ डेडलाइन की आप उसके बारे में थोड़ा सा और डिस्कस कर सकते हैं और ये स्मॉल बिजनेस को किस तरह अफेक्ट करेगा so jamil on uh, the may 7 date is for those individuals or companies so if you have taken as an individual on 1099 schedule c or if you have taken as a company for payroll for your employees that have taken the ppp loan but now understand or are of the impression that either they do not qualify for it or things they certified on the application were not accurate so these people can return the funds or cancel the loan if they have not yet got the funds without any questions asked as chairman morani mentioned it's as if that it never happened so that that you know they'll be forgiven for you know if we have a lot of big ones in the news so they've returned the funds and uh, same thing with the small ones if you feel that you know uh or if you feel uh, the the other option that uh, uh chairman morani just pointed out if you feel that is a much better option because there is no way you're going to use these for intended purposes uh it's better to just cancel the loan or return the funds and uh, uh before may 7th like it never happened and use the other option if you you feel that you are situation is better suited for those options okay so एक और सवाल ये है कि इफ आई एम अ बिजनेस ओनर एंड आई हैव रियलाइज्ड दैट आई हैव अप्लाइड फॉर मोर फंड्स सो मैंने जितने फंड्स अप्लाई किए वो थोड़े ज्यादा कर दिए जितना मुझे करने चाहिए थे राइट तो मेरे क्या ऑप्शंस हैं 
पूरा रिटर्न करना है व्हाट आर माय ऑप्शंस के अगर मैंने थोड़ा ज्यादा कर दिया सो आई वुड से देयर आर टू टू थ्री ऑप्शंस दैट दे हैव एज अगेन डिस्क्लेमर द सिचुएशन इज इवॉल्विंग सो यू माइट सी समथिंग डिफरेंट आई एम जस्ट गोइंग टू शेयर व्हाट वी नो अराउंड and the first option is if the bank allows you can only take the portion that you think you should have asked for so if you have asked for 10 but you think oh 7000 was the right number that i should have asked for take the loan only for 7 if the bank allows most of the banks may not allow that option so the second option is either when you take the 10000 dollar loan put the 3000 back and just use the 7000 and then of course ask for forgiveness for 7 either when you get the loan or at the time of forgiveness uh when you are applying for the forgiveness for 7000 put the 3000 back in the loan so that's paid off you kept it separate like chairman morani mentioned so many times keep those money separate so if you've kept it separate 10000 you only use 7000 you knew either beforehand or, or later you came to know you applied for too much and then you have the 3000 left apply for uh, forgiveness for 7000 pay off the 3000 the third option which the disclaimer that i mentioned is uh, more uh, applicable because it's more gray area right now i'm sure as we will come up with more black and white uh, information on this uh, the banks and currencies are waiting for that black and white info right now it's gray the third option could be to continue to use the fund but for intended purposes so you took 10000 dollars you used 7000 for intended purposes you have 3000 more you applied for forgiveness for 7000 you can keep using the 3000 for intended purposes for payroll for rent for uh, mortgage interest or for utilities we don't know if you can continue using the 3000 as a loan for the remainder of the loan period for 2 years and keep making monthly installments or you will have to pay that back at the time you apply for forgiveness so that's the gray area right now uh, we have been asked that question from a lot of people who have uh, closed the loans a lot of people who have we have closed the loans for that if i've applied for this 100000 my payroll will be about 75000 so i have that but my rent is only 5000 my utility is so much and even if i use perfectly i might be able to use 85 i still have 15000 more what should i do can i use that for a loan for the remainder of the 2 years and keep making payments for payroll rent and utilities from that or i have to give it back at the time when i apply for forgiveness what answer is we don't know right now it's a gray area so right now it could be either or before we get more clarity on this uh, from sba okay thank you kabir inshallah i hope that in 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 the near future uh we will be getting more uh, clarifications and inshallah we'll bring that to the jamaat um amir i have a few questions that i would like to run with you uh or by you um so so the first one is uh and it's a bit um complicated let me see if i can break this down if a business had to close down and lay off employees and got approved for ppp can they pay higher salaries to the few remaining employees which could also include family members as long as they use the funds for payroll as required by ppp rules and then rehire the employees prior to june 30th and get 100% of their amount forgiven can you can you break that down for us yeah that's a very interesting uh, situation that uh, is being discussed uh, across the industry everywhere uh, that that sounds like a very interesting loophole in the law but i want to very um, you know stress this very important matter that remember as i said in the beginning the spirit of the law is probably that comes back in the form of clarifications when the irs and the treasury and the sba comes back with clarifications so if you look at it today yes it sounds like it that take the money run the payroll for 75% 25% do a good job there get the employees back uh, by june 30th then you're all good but we want all business owners to understand that that doesn't sound like being in the true spirit of the law and so be careful 
watch out doing anything like this because it may be clarified in the next couple of weeks, two, three weeks as to whether there are any restrictions on the owners or whether there are other restrictions. So uh, I want to stress that it doesn't, it doesn't look like it goes in line with the spirit of the law, so please don't do it without making sure that it is completely you know, good to go. And, and, and at this time, from the rule, it looks like, okay. From the spirit, it doesn't. Good to know. Good to know. Kabir, do you have any additional thoughts on that? Do you think it is? You perfectly covered it. Uh, and as the rule stands right now, uh, we may come up with different loopholes that, oh, I can do this, or I can do that, or I can run it this way. Uh, let me just pay all the family members and everyone, um, you know, throughout the United States or wherever, and uh, come up with the payroll 75%. But like you mentioned, in the spirit of the law, uh, it's, it's not a bright thing to do. And uh, we never know, like you mentioned previously, that maybe this time around you'll get forgiveness because you did everything uh, that is in the rule. But at future incidents, whenever if there is some issue or IRS comes to audit for a totally different thing and then starts looking back, oh, you got TPP, okay, let's see how you paid that off or, or who did you pay? It may come up at a later date. So it's better to be careful today. Thank you, Kabir. So this is the final question, but it is a three-part question. Um, so let me see if I can ask this to where um, uh, it's clear. Uh, first of all is, do we have to have the same employees back when we hire, or can they be different as long as we maintain the headcount? Amir? Yeah, it is focused on headcount, not the exact employees. So uh, you need to just get the headcount back uh, the same number of employees that you had before. Okay, all right, great. So, so along those is that, look, a lot of the uh, employees are asking that if we will come back, but pay us two or $3 more for hazard pay, how do we handle that? Is that something that can be a part of the forgiveness if you increase their, uh, their, their payroll, uh, their uh, hourly wage? Well, yeah, I think, uh, you know, if it makes business sense for them to do that, uh, I, based on what, what is there in the rules, that doesn't prohibit, it doesn't prohibit them from paying more for a genuine business reason. Um, if, it, if it has to be done and if it makes business sense and they can't find other employees at a reasonable cost, um, there is nothing to stop them from doing that and it would count towards the payroll forgiveness. Okay, and the final part is, can, can, can the employer use PPP funds for paying the taxes, the Social Security, Medicare, and state and employment taxes, the employee benefit, health insurance, HSA contribution, pensions, et cetera, if they have those benefits for the employees? All the benefits are covered. Um, the only part that you mentioned, the payroll tax, so as we know, in the payroll tax, uh, there are two parts. You know, when when we pay an employee, let's say we pay a thousand dollars to an employee, uh, we deduct Social Security and Medicare from their paycheck. But then we, as an employer, match it. The part that is deducted from the employee is part of the gross payroll, and it gets counted towards the the use of money for payroll. But the money, the amount of money that we as employers have to match, that is not included. So for some reason, they put it that the payroll tax burden of the employer is to be carried by the employer. It, it, it cannot be used from the PPP money. The rest of it, what you mentioned, the benefits are covered, the state unemployment taxes are covered, only this part is not. Got it. So, so anything that benefits the employee uh, can can be included, but the employer part of things. Uh, yeah, the employer part. Of course, it also benefits the employee in the long term. But for some reason, the law has. This is the new clarification that had come, you know, from previous ones. But currently, it says that you cannot use this money for paying the employer share of the 
Social Security and Medicare. Wow. Um, great, guys. Um, we, we are uh, towards the uh, end of our webinar. Um, Kabir, would you like to share some final thoughts with our participants? Yes, as the topic says that, you know, uh, you got the money, now what? The now what is I want to get forgiveness and inshallah everyone will get 100% forgiveness. The key is document, document and document. So make sure as we, you know, we are most of our, us are immigrants when we submit our IRS appli uh, INS applications for green card or citizenship, we have nice cover letter and then have attachments perfectly laid out to get that citizenship or green card. Same way for forgiveness, I would have a cover letter, total amount of loan I got, where I used payroll, uh, utility, rent, this is the amount, and I'm asking for forgiveness for all this amount, and hopefully the balance is zero. And I've attached every single thing at the back, my payroll reports, my rent checks, my utilities, uh, and banks most likely may ask uh, uh, that give us the bank statement from January, February to show your rent or rent checks to make sure it's the same amount. Or uh, in some instance, they might ask for your rent uh, lease. So make sure you have all that ready. Uh, that'll be a key. The documents will play a key role to get forgiveness. And I hope you maintain that from the day you get the loan applications, make your accountant or whoever does your payroll, your friend and uh, hopefully we uh, submit it to the bank uh, as soon as possible after the eight weeks and try to get the forgiveness. Great. Uh, Amir, any final thoughts for our participants? So I, uh, I think, uh, you know, just to reiterate quickly what I mentioned in the uh, earlier talk is that uh, if there is a way and if there is, no, there is not, find a way to keep the PPP money managed separately and then track it dollar for dollar. It is a very, uh, very sensitive money. It has very serious uh, you know, consequences if not handled properly. But be confident about it. Don't be scared. Uh, just manage it right and manage your budget properly. Uh, plan out your situation right now because as, as I mentioned that this money is for use of payroll. Now you got the money, aapne abhi mil gaya, aapko dollars, aapko usko payroll ke liye use karna hai, aapka business maybe two weeks ke baad kholega ya three weeks ke baad kholega ya abhi hai aur aap payroll ke liye use kar rahe Separate rakhe and then manage everything very carefully because it's what, as I like that we're getting money from here, from there, this benefit, that benefit, but all of this has an end. Yes, of course, at time pe sub programs stop ho jayenge. Just a EIDL stop ho gaya. PPPP will be finished. Then you know unemployment benefit will be stopped. But life goes on, and the business goes on. So ye time hai ke all businesses should plan. All business owners should plan their budget. Apne finances ko bhot carefully dek lein, plan kar lein. Aapko koi bhi kisam ki iske andar mein help chahiye, aapke debt management ke liye, aapke credit situation ke liye, financials ke liye, koi bhi kisam ki isme help chahiye. Of course, we have a very good team available uh, with EPB across the country. Uh, call access and EPB teams will be there to help you out. But work on the details today when the money is there in your hand from the US government to help you. If we wake up after four weeks or eight weeks, all the money is gone, then it will be too late. Gee. So this is a time to plan it and we want to stress, keep it separate, plan it properly, get the forgiveness and get the business planned out today so we can get it all going nicely for the businesses as we go forward. Great thoughts, great thoughts. I would like to thank Kabir Laiwala, Amir Murani for their amazing insight and expertise uh, for, for today's session. Uh, gentlemen, please accept our, 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 um, um, our thanks uh, for, for the amazing work. 
Um, as you can, uh, dear attendees, as you can imagine, um, sometimes we get many more questions than we can possibly answer. For those questions that we have not had a chance to answer, or if you have a question which is very specific to your situation, um, we understand that a lot of the information shared today was very technical. EPB has arranged for Jamaati members to get help by phone for a one-on-one -on -one consultation for PPP loans related questions, specific PPP loan related questions. Please visit the link that is now showing on your screen to request a phone consultation. There is also a QR code that you can use your cell phones to, uh, to scan and, and just, it's a short form, please fill it out. And our volunteers will get in touch with you to answer your specific PPP loan questions. This link will also be included in the email which will be sent out to you along with the survey and the link to the recorded video for today's webinar. Uh, this webinar, as I mentioned earlier, has been recorded and will be available on the Smiley um, Chamber website, which is the smileychamber.org. Uh, by the way, when you do get the email, we request you to please complete the survey so, so we get your feedback. Also, uh, I'd like to state that as the states begin to reopen for business, we encourage the Jamaats to please continue practicing social distancing cover your face in public, minimize trips for essential needs and work only, wash your hands often, and stay up to date on state and CDC guidelines. As mentioned many times before, our institutions has trained volunteers available to assist the Jamaat, so please reach out as needed via Access Helpline. Once again, the number is 844-552-2237. The Jamaat should know that all Jamaati assets institutions have come together to assist the Jamaat in various ways. For example, the three community credit unions, as you heard earlier, within a Jamaat have come together to develop a COVID-19 assistance program. Our trade associations are helping with procurement of essential supplies in case there are shortages. And our Jamaati members in specific areas of expertise are fully engaged to guide the Jamaat in need of assistance in the specific industries. We hope today's webinar was uh, offered you a lot more of information, uh, but like we mentioned earlier, uh, please reach out to the institutions should you need any additional help. We thank you all for attending the webinar and Yali Madad.